Hi everyone, I am Amy. Hello everyone, I am George. In this video, we will discuss one of the most debated and sensitive topics, namely why is marital rape not considered as criminal offense? And, while addressing this question, we will also discuss, should marital rape criminalized? However, before discussing the topic namely marital rape, let's first understand the meaning of rape, I mean. What is rape? How it could be defined? Though, rape is defined with some technical terms in law, but we don't confuse you by giving the legal definition rather we well define rape in simple English language as the sexual intercourse carried out forcibly, or under threat of any sort, against the will of a female. However, when we talk about marital rape, then it does not include the sexual intercourse against the will of wife rather it is deliberately exempted. Therefore, there are two groups in India, first one supports the existing legal status of so-called marital rape and the second group advocates the criminalization of marital rape. So, we will focus on both the views with reasonable arguments. Let's first discuss the views that marital rape should be criminalized. The group contending the criminalization of rape has following arguments and supports. It is against the will of wife. Marital rape damages the self-respect and wishes of a woman. Marital rape damages the fundamental rights of wife, especially Article 14 and 21 of the Constitution. Legality of marital rape is the brazen example of sex discrimination, and last but not the least, legality of marital rape gives up her hand to husband and hence, husband, usually, interprets his wife as chattel that is movable property. Now, before discussing the arguments that is in favor of not to criminalize the marital rape, let's first understand the meaning of marriage especially in India. I emphasize, marriage is not a legal contract in India or rather it is an institution and sacrament, as it is comprehensively defined as. Hindu marriage joins two individuals of opposite sex for life, so that they can pursue dharma, which means duty, artha, which means possessions, and karma, which means physical desires. And, more importantly, in Indian culture, marriage is followed by traditional rituals for consummation. I repeat, marriage is followed by traditional rituals for the consummation, which means, conjugal right is one of the prime purposes of the marriage. In such a condition, criminalizing the marital rape will compel to pulverize the sanctity of Indian marriage tradition. So, now, let's check out the reasoning behind not criminalizing marital rape. Before arguing in favor of not criminalizing the marital rape, we need to understand first that what constitutes marital rape and what does not. The matrimonial relationship of a man and a woman stands on a different basis than any other relationship and the disputes arising out of matrimonial relationships are natural and the story of mundane life. However, if it is sever in nature, then aptly taken care of by the current legal system, I repeat that if husband tortures or abuses by any means, such as physical abuse, mental abuse, financial abuse, or even sexual abuse, then the current legal system aptly takes care of that as First, if a husband forces or rapes his estranged wife. Here, estranged means one who is living separately either through judicial separation or by any other cultural usages, then as per section 376b of Indian Penal Code, the husband will be punished up to seven years imprisonment. Secondly, if a person makes unnatural sexual relationship even with his wife, then as per section 377 of Indian Penal Code, it is punishable by imprisonment up to 10 years. Thirdly, if a person makes sexual relationship with a woman deceitfully, inducing a belief of lawful marriage, then as per section 493 of Indian Penal Code, it is punishable by imprisonment up to 10 years. Fourthly, Section 498A of Indian Penal Code covers all kinds of cruelty on wife including mental, physical and sexual cruelty and a husband can be jailed up to three years upon conviction. And Fifthly, 
Protection of Women from Domestic Violence Act, 2005 covers physical, emotional, sexual cruelty and the wife is entitled to have protection. Not only this, in case, husband does not comply orders, then he will be punished. On top of this, the legal remedies available to women, existing under both civil and criminal laws, provide speedy and effective remedies. Apart from this, married woman has a special status, based on that, she has had the right to get maintenance, alimony from her husband by ways of special provision, which only wife is entitled to. Likewise, if we analyze these legal provisions, we find that, there is no aspect that law left to uncover. In addition to this, these provisions potentially protects the self-respect, social sanctity, and values of a married woman. We believe, many of you still not convinced with the argument discussed above, so pay attention on the following data. As per the National Survey and Research, it is stated that Section 498A, that is stating about the domestic violence against women as well as the protection of women from domestic violence act, 2005 have been gravely misused, as thousands of false cases are being filed every year. Secondly, as per the National Crime Records Bureau report, in 2016, 186,000 arrests have been made. Thirdly, in many of the cases, the husband's family are being pressurized for out-of-court settlements by paying huge sums of money or else the sword keeps hanging over their heads. Fourthly, as per the National Crime Records Bureau Suicide Statistics Report, six 2000s married men commit suicides every year, which is more than double the suicides by woman. Because of frequent and rampant misuse of Section 498A, in Inesh Kumar v. State of Bihar and Rajesh Sharma and Oz v. State of Uttar Pradesh, Supreme Court issued a direction as It would be prudent and wise for a police officer, that no arrest is made without reasonable satisfaction reached after some investigation as to genuineness of allegations. Second perspective especially in the Indian context. As per the Indian cultural practices, the woman who is raped lost her not only chastity, but also her character, she, no more, remains sanctus woman and hence, society does not accept her. However, over period in time, as codified law evolved, the consent of woman is given priority, but still, the first reasoning is deeply embedded in our society. On the other hand, Sex after marriage, is not only the prima facie first matrimonial right of both the spouses, but also acceptable by society at large and hence, sex after marriage does not affect the chastity of women. Besides, sexual intercourse completes the marriage and assists spouses to live a successful life with dignity. In the case, Vinita Saxena v. Pankaj Pandit Supreme Court stated that marriage without sex is an anathema. However, in the case of divorce or even judicial separation, the wife can effectively withdraw her consent from having sexual relations with her estranged husband. Moreover, it is pertinent to note that a man or woman on getting married lose their rights to perform sexual acts with any other person apart from their married partner. This is how a man or a woman on getting married give their consent to their spouse to have sexual intercourse and hence such sexual acts cannot be termed as rape. Concluding Argument Part 3 of the Indian Constitution gives basic rights that is fundamental rights to every citizen of India, but such rights are not absolute rather, there are reasonable restriction. If reasonable restrictions would not be applied, then there would be a complete chaotic condition. In order to understand the application of reasonable restriction, we need to see other aspects or else it would sound unreasonable. Other aspects says that in order to ensure one citizen's freedom or fundamental rights, it is essential to limit or restrict other citizens' freedom. It means, the freedom of one citizen ends at the same place where the freedom of other citizens starts. Likewise, putting a minuscule reasonable restriction not only secures freedom of every citizen of this country equally, 
but also maintains harmony and sanctity of the social functioning. Similarly, I believe, not criminalizing the marital rape ensures the longevity and resilience of husband-wife's relationship as well as protects the sanctity of marriage. So, the people who really advocate for the criminalization of marital rape, I believe could not understood the value, sanctity, and purpose of marriage. The day, marital rape will be criminalized, it will definitely destroy the sanctity of marriage, as not only husband, but every member of a family would not be secure. Some members of every family will be criminal, and, the adorable family will end up as criminal family. Criminalization of marital rape will definitely destroy the sanctity of marital relationship. Most of their husbands remain in fear and trauma that when their wives will file rape case against them, it will cause to evaporate the love and romance from life. Though, there are hundreds of points in support of not to criminalize the marital rape, but I would like to conclude it by saying that, advocating for the criminalization of marital rape is just an immature and unromantic thought. Rest what do you think, you may share your thoughts and views in the comment box given below.